Gospel Road. It is Halloween weekend. That's a big controversy right there. And someday I probably should do a podcast on that. I could do a podcast on the holidays. A little more different, but anyway. Um, it is, you know, uh, the, bi- the big discussion. Is it Christian? Is it pagan? Mixture of both, you know, it really started with the All Saints Day, which is, you know, tomorrow, and then you had All Hallows Eve, which then became Halloween. Mixture of both it is, but, you know, one of those things they always say that God made things. Satan took them. Do you allow Satan to have them, or do you take them back? Interesting statement. Very interesting. You know, things that could be made for good, but we allow them to be used for evil. It's kind of like creating a business. And you were doing a good business, someone takes that business over and then starts running it into the ground. Did that make it a bad business? No, at the beginning it was good. But then it was just a a bad owner, a bad manager that kind of turned things around. So who's managing it? Who's owning it? Who is doing what with it? It's just the same way that we talk when we look at what we're doing. Because we could be good, something could happen, we could be bad. But then we are being held accountable. We are responsible for what we do. So, can we become good again? You know, how are we going to react to things that happen in our lives? You know, that is the life question. How do we react? It's not always what we do. It's how we react. How do we react to things that happen on a daily basis? Or major milestones. How do we react? I don't always react the best. By no means. Because I am not perfect, I'm far from perfect, and I'm not able to be perfect. Though many of us have that perfection piece in us, because if we're not doing it perfect, then sometimes we just give up. There's no motivation to continue to keep trying to do better. But that's it, we're always growing, we're always learning. You know, which is why I do the little word of the day shares every day. We're learning. That's an example of learning. Learning a new word. Learning a new thing. That's why a lot of times I will do in my other podcast, The Daily Planet, and I'll talk about different things. You know, five random facts about something. It's learning. Putting new knowledge into our mind. Why are things the way they are? We'll never have that answer 100%, but we'll at least get an idea. It'll help us on forming that opinion. It'll help us with that, those two words we hear a lot, common sense. Because we also hear how there's not a lot of common sense anymore, or there's not, or common sense is not very common. Well, It cannot be common if a person does not know. If you're lacking the knowledge, then you cannot have that common sense. Because if you did not know about this, or how it works, then you're lacking. Of course, we're we're not all able to know everything. But again, it's that growth It's that journey. It's the path that we're taking. And how you're making decisions and which roads that you're going down and which direction that you're you're going to to make sure that you're staying on that right path. It's not easy. And I know for a while that we've been talking because right now it's not easy because you have so many people spouting from the top of their lungs. That you get frustrated. 
And I think I mentioned the other day of how it's it seems to be the minority that speaks the loudest and they get recognized. The majority does not. And we're getting to the point that the majority does not matter what line you were on, what side you were on. You have a majority that thinks one way, but it's the minority that gets the win. Which then comes the term from, I've heard for years since I was a kid back in the 80s, silent majority. But then when you do get those from the majority that are trying to speak up and be louder, then they get censored. They get silenced. So it's not even like we're trying to be silent. We're being silenced. No, you can't talk about that because that's not what we're trying to say. That's not what we're trying to get across here. That's not part of our plan. So no, you cannot let that happen. It's unfortunate. Because we're not able to have a conversation. I saw something the other day and it said uh, that don't raise your voice. Just get a bigger argument. Yeah. You know, it's debate. You don't have to argue. You don't have to yell. You have a conversation. And if you're not able to win... You need better information. You need more information. You need a better argument. And that's what we're seeing today. We're seeing all these debates, all these arguments happening, and nobody has a great argument on either side. Nobody has a great argument. The only one that wins is choice. I decide what's good, better for me. Now, that is a very special string to use. <laughs> I mean, that's like walking on the edge. Because there's others that use the same thing. You know, my body, my choice. Well, the thing is, if it's my body, my choice, and if that's what you're going to spout, shouldn't it be that way across the board? Not just when it works for you. Which, that's what we have today. Because people will change their ideas, change their mind, depending on which way the wind's blowing and what's happening. Because it works for me here, but it doesn't work for me there, so now I need to... It, no, that does. that's not true anymore. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Well, probably a little too much time spent on that, but again, as I've been saying... We have that free will. We have that freedom of choice. And with choice comes great responsibility. Because that's a power. That is a great power. Probably one of the biggest powers that are out there. Choice. Responsibility. Big word. Many people do not want to be responsible. Today, we're going to look at 2 Timothy 2. It says, You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus and what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits, since his arm aim is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowded unless he competes according to the rules. It is the hard-working farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Remember, Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, 
the offspring of David, and preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, that is in Christ Jesus, with eternal glory. The saying is trustworthy for if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remember them of these things and charge them before God, not to quarrel about words, which does no good, but only ruins the hearers. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth, but avoid irreverent babble, for it will lead people into more and more ungodliness, and their talk will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenus and Philetus, who have swerved from the truth, saying that the resurrection has already happened. They are upsetting the faith of some. But God's firm foundation stands bearing this seal. The Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone who names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Now, in a great house, there are only not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay some for honorable use, some for dishonorable. Therefore, if anyone cleans himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. So flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call the Lord from a pure heart. Have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they breed quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponent with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do for his will. Second Timothy 2. Teaching. Learning. Sharing. I mean, that's what we heard in this. You know, helping others to be better, to do better, not to, to trip them up, not to cause them to have obstacles, but to help them be the best that they can be, to help them be better. I mean, to this point, you know, we're talking about Christianity, talking about Jesus Christ, talking about sharing Jesus with others. The true Jesus the right story. Unfortunately, over the years, there's so many different stories. Again, this is why the Bible tells us to confirm but verify, or trust but verify. This is what I'm told. But I need to make sure it's right. That's not just in what we're being shared in church or in scripture that's also in the world trust but verify you might have been told but is that true it gets me in trouble all the time because i will trust but verify because you have to if you want to have the right information, if you want to have the correct knowledge, you need to verify. That does not happen. And it has not happened, I don't know, ever. 
I mean, some people do, but it's not a very common occurrence that people do that. I'm not saying this is anything new. I don't think that we are dealing with anything new that wasn't here at the beginning of time. We have not advanced. Some ways we have, some ways we have not. Some ways I, I think we have lacked advancement actually gone backwards because we look through history and see how certain things were built and we can't figure out how they were. Well, how were they built? And we can't even figure out how they were built because we're saying there's no way people could, man, people could have built it, but it's there. What, did aliens do it? Well, that's one of the answers. Magic, did it just appear? Well, that's one of the answers. But what's the true answer? What's the right answer? Yeah, nobody knows. Because we have nothing to tell us. And we can't figure it out. Trust, but verify. So how we have advanced in many ways, I think we have also fell back in other ways. And I think we're going to continue to fall back because we're going to be dealing and we're seeing lots of laziness in the world because of technology because of video games because of social media because people just want to lay around and get fat I can say that because I failed sit around watch TV a lot pretty much all I did growing up gained a lot of weight Lost some, a lot, could lose more. You know, we all fall into that procrastination area or that lack of motivation. You know, we get tired, we get exhausted. And sometimes, especially as we get older, it gets harder to snap back and to get right back on that wagon. But we do the best we can. Well, we should be doing the best we can. We need to continue to to push forward and keep trying, keep moving. To share the knowledge that we have with others, to help others be better as we are bettering ourselves. And it's not that we have to change the world we help one person world's a lot to help and one person's not able to do that but if we can help one just helping that one you could be the world to that person Second Timothy 2 is what we looked at today. You need to really put that in perspective. Accountability. Where am I? What am I doing? Where am I going? What have I done? What haven't I done? What should I do? It's one thing we are not good at, and that is holding ourselves accountable. Again, nothing new, but still dealing with it. 2 Timothy 2, read that today. Read that for yourself. How does it help you to, to be that better person, to help others be better, to grow, to be successful? When I say successful, I'm not always talking money. Just life, kindness, love. You know, again, in verse 24, it says, A Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil. 
Verse 25, correcting his opponents with gentleness. Do we see that correction with gentleness? Do you see people going after faith, love, patience? Ignoring the foolishness, ignoring the ignorant conversations? No, we seem to be jumping into those with both feet. Creating more quarrels, more fights, more arguments. Love. Kindness. Gentleness. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to share it with others on social media and give me a a five-star rating if you would. I would appreciate it. Thank you for listening and you can always find me on social media find my other podcasts that I do on Facebook Twitter Instagram my buddy Jimmy and on YouTube at my buddy Jimmy 101 even on TikTok at my buddy Jimmy thank you for listening to the Gospel Road have a great day God bless Spinal adjustments provided by Dr. Chad Rolfson. The Spinal Tuning Chiropractic Center is a Des Moines area low flat fee per month unlimited chiropractic care practice. When life happens, just adjust. Schedule today at SpinalTuning.com. Barbecue provided by Kenny's Rib Wagon. Catering ribs for your pleasure and serving daily at Plaza Pub, 62nd and Douglas in Des Moines across from Merle Hay Mall. Find Kenny's Rib Wagon on Facebook. The Jimmy Olsen Radio Network.